Hi, and welcome to the Bookish Sister Podcast. My name is Jeanette. You can find me pretty much everywhere that I am as Bookish Sister, all one word. And I hope you all have had a wonderful week since I last podcast. We've had a bit of craziness here at the house today, so excuse me if I seem a little spacey or jumbled around. Our hot water heater went out, and my husband looked on YouTube on how to fix it, and so he's been doing that all day. And then yesterday was my son's birthday, and we just did family stuff, and he's going to have his party next weekend. But so I've been really busy this weekend, but I did manage to get some knitting done, and you may recognize this first thing. This is my shawl hill pattern by Alicia Plummer, and it's so pretty. This is done out of some no makers in the mint chocolate chip colorway and it's in her tweed and to fall for me is just time to knit with tweed yarn I love knitting with tweed yarn in the fall so it's done and it can stretch down even farther it's definitely something that's good for if you're gonna go out and you don't quite need a jacket but you want something that you can put around your shoulders to keep you warm you could scrunch it up and use it as a big cozy cowl too so it's very versatile and then the next thing I finished this week is my Without a Sound by Allie Coffey. And this is going to be a present for either Jay, my son's teacher or his assistant teacher or somebody that helps my son at his school as a Christmas present. And it was a fun knit. It went really fast and I enjoyed it a lot. It's knit out of one of my 15 oldest skeins in Fanny, Fanny's Fingering Weight in the autumn color. So, this is what the color of the yarn looks like. Very, very beautiful. So those are my two finished objects that I had this week. I'm going to take a sip. I'm having some coffee because I'm a little bit tired. My little owl cup. And this coffee I have to tell you about because... It's amazing. I've I've talked about um, this podcast this on this podcast about this coffee before, but I've never discussed this flavor. And so, about twice a year, I go to San Marco Coffee and place a very big order to get free shipping. And that's my coffee for the time. And I got fall and Halloween and holiday coffees this last time I did, and I got the caramel apple. And it is so amazing. It first you when you first taste it, it's, you can tef, definitely tell the coffee. But then the next taste that hits you is the apple, and it's a very good caramel apple, that slight tang tartness, and it's really good. And then the after flavor for me is the caramel, and I absolutely this is my favorite coffee that I've ever had from them, which is saying a lot because they have some amazing ones. I haven't tried them all because I believe there are thousands. If you like flavored coffee, you'd probably love them. I heard about it from uh, Karen, who is around the twist, and I just wanted to share that with you guys because it's so wonderful. Now, for my works in progress this week, I, I started a whole bunch of new things. I did have two languishing whips that I should have worked on, my Coraline sweater and my husband's socks, but I only did a couple rows on them. I, and my Coraline sweater, I'm in the dreaded part of the sleeves, and I know some people love doing sleeves on sweaters. I'm not the biggest fan. And I think it's just because this year, up until this point, I have knit about two or a sweater every two months. And that's a lot for me. It normally takes me a lot longer because I normally will knit other stuff for other people and work on stuff for me last. But since I had the podcast this last year, I have been wanting to get stuff done to show you guys. So I've been finishing up my sweaters faster. So I think it's just a matter of my sweater mojo is kind of gone. That's okay because I already have sweater to wear to Rhinebeck. So I'll be all good with that. So I didn't work on my two other whips, but I did cast on for our hat cal, and it's October, and we're knitting hats in the group for the podcast on Ravelry, and the first hat that I cast on for this, I'm going to try to get one done a week because hats are so fast, and I have a whole bunch I need to do for Christmas, almost matches the same color, but 
My best friend has two daughters and I'm making them each hats for Christmas. So this is the first hat. And this is the Aurora hat by Wooly Warmhead. And it's so cute. There's a little garter stitch. There's bobbles you can see. There's some different texture. And I'm working on the decreases. <laughs> it's really funny because my son saw me knitting this and he goes, is that for me? I said, no, it's for so-and-so, a friend, you know, for Christmas. He goes, well, you know, those are like my favorite colors ever. <laughs> so I think I may need to get some of this. Oh, and I forgot to bring the tag down. This was given to me in a swap that we did on the podcast for local things. This is Malon B, M-A-L-O-N-B, Etsy shop. And this yarn is amazing. The twist on it is so nice. The color saturation, my, my light's blowing it out a bit, but it's very saturated throughout. There are no white spots. It's so well done, and it's really squishy. So there's greens and blues. And the hat is knitting up so quickly, as you can see. This is a great thing about hats in general. It's why I wanted to kind of do a hat knit along for October, because they're so fast. I have so many to knit, especially kids' hats. They go really fast. And the bag that I have this in is my Girl Cape bag that I love. It's just, and there's her button. And the best way to get her bags, I think, is to follow her on Instagram and see when she posts updates. And then the next thing I started was my, well, my stripey socks for October. Another reason why I had a huge cast on thing this week is because I wanted to put new stuff in all my Halloween bags. So they all came out. This is a bird legs sock cube. It has a little carabiner. Her, these are, she does her little things so well. It's a ghost. And there, that ghost has two eyes. That's a Cyclops ghost. That one has two eyes. And it's really well done. You have the strap and inside here, is some lollipop yarn in the jelly bean colorway. It's so squishy. It's just, can you see that? Yeah, it's, it's very squishy. Sometimes when you get uh, balls wound like this, they're, they're more compact ball. This is really squishy. And then this is what the sock is knitting up like so far. I love how it has these variegated spots within the deeper purple. You can see them there. And I just do, I do my stripe socks toe up on two circular needles with the fish lips kiss heel just because it fits my foot really well and why change something if it works for you really well. So those are my socks that I've been working on. And all these projects I just started October 1st or later so I haven't been working on them that long. The next thing I have is in a freckled whimsy bag. I got these back in August, and I don't think I showed them on the podcast because she had a Halloween update in August. Her prints, they just, they always get me. I, always, I almost, she did a fall update, and I had four bags in my cart. I didn't buy any of them. Thankfully, all the other people out there who love her bags also bought them, so I didn't have to feel bad. <laughs> I always feel glad when I, I put something in my Etsy cart and I always hope that somebody else will buy it. And these are really cute little hexy pumps. And this well made bag. Well, I love that. And inside, I don't know why I got this bag with the spiders, but the, I, since it's inside, it doesn't bother me too much. But I hate spiders. They're <laughs> one of my biggest fear things, which is silly, but I. And I, I can kill them. I'm not, I have some friends that are terrified of spiders and will call people to come and kill them or call their husbands home from work. But I can deal with it, but I don't like to. And for about the next hour, I'm like, ugh. I, I blame the movie Arachnophobia. If anybody else was born in the night, or born in the mid 80s and has seen that movie. But this that I am knitting on is done in some. The yarn is some 
I wish I brought the tag down. It is Kitchen Maids. It's in the Yarn vs. Zombies. I was in her Downton Abbey Club, and it had three different months that you could be in. And I was in all three, and this is the yarn from one of those. And the color is called Kitchen Maids, and it's in a tweed yarn. I don't think she still makes this because it was for a club, but it has pink and blue. And I am knitting the Peekaboo shawl by Jennifer DeSau and it's a great pattern it's just working up really quickly it's garter stitch with some eyelet rows very simple and I'm just really liking it then the next thing I have I don't know if you guys could hear that crash upstairs that was my cats I have three cats and they like to get into mischief so the last thing I cast on which is in another freckled whimsy bag. It just has little things on it that are very cute. And in here, I have, it's called the Gradient, Cal, it's just called Gradient by Jill Zielinski. And it is a three color, well, I guess it can be either. It could be a three color or it could be Two color, there are different options that it gives you for the construct how you want to do the color work on it. But I am doing three different colors, maybe even more, depending if I need more yarn. I'm doing it out of knitting color. And this was a like a color kit. It had different colors in it. And it had black and purple. It's a great purple. And then lastly, this green, which <laughs> looks yellow. It's a very neon, and I'm not a big neon person. I actually don't like neons, but for Halloween, it's okay. Neon green. You're not going to be able to see. It's kind of right there, but it's greener. It's like a lime neon green. And I am doing, the Gradient Cal is a color work. There you can see it. And I start off with the purple. You can see the black working in its way up there. And then I'm starting on the neon green. And it's very simple. I think it's going to look really nice though. I actually, in my Halloween costume, I have a wig that's black with purple and green streaks. So I think this will be a great thing I can wear with my costume. I'll just wear a black skirt or something and I can pretend I'm a witch. I don't know. It's just going to be a homemade thrown together costume. But I love going around trick-or-treating with my kids. I didn't get to trick-or-treat a lot when I was a kid. Um, I did for a couple years and then my mom decided she didn't want us doing trick-or-treating anymore and so I didn't get to trick-or-treat much of my later childhood. So I I get into it. I love going around with my kids and getting to see them very excited and going up to the doors. We go around our neighborhood and it's a, a lot of people get into the, the spirit of it and there's people decorating. Some people will drive golf carts around. It's, it's funny. And when I say that they drive golf carts around, that makes it sound like I live in a fancy neighborhood, which I don't at all. It's just this one guy who who does it and I don't know why he has a golf cart because I don't the golf cart we don't live near a golf course and the houses aren't far enough away that you need something to motorize you between but I, I think he just likes it he decorates his golf cart up in the so it, it's just a thing he enjoys I guess those are all of my whips I don't have any spinning. Spinzilla starts tomorrow and I'm a little bit nervous because I've set some pretty big goals for myself. That's why I thought I would try to spin a braid this week and show you guys, but I said I don't want to already, I don't want to burn myself out on it before it even starts. So I'm trying to spin a braid and ply it before I try to spin a braid a day. I, I didn't want to do it. But, I have been prepping for Spinzilla, and I am later today going to be doing a periscope for just showing what I'm going to be spinning. So I'll lay out my different braids of fiber and say, I'm hoping to spin this and this. 
and Periscope's only good for 24 hours, so if you miss it, I'm sorry. But you'll see the finished yarn, hopefully, next Sunday. So either way, it all works out. And my goal for Spinzilla, this is my first time, I, I wanted to participate kind of off the records for this first time, just see how I would do. But my friend Dina is running up a team, and I really want to be on her team, and it's no pressure, which is nice. Other than the pressure you put on yourself, which I will probably be putting a little bit on myself, but I want to finish one braid a day. That's my goal. I have all the fiber laid out. I still need to make it into pencil roving because that's what I like to do. I started making some of it into pencil roving, but not all of it. And I, I might try to show that on Periscope if I can get my husband to hold the camera because I can't make pencil roving and hold the phone at the same time to take the Periscope. And what I'm probably going to do for Spinzilla is I can't spin during the day. I work from home and I have a toddler and my son goes, to, my older son goes to school, but, or my, my older child goes to school, but I can't spin during the day. I have cats and I, my daughter likes the wheel. She's fascinated by it. So I only can really spin at night after they're in bed and my husband and I will hang out in our room and I will spin. So that's what I'm planning to do. So I will still have knitting to show you guys next week because I can't. If she, if they if she was older and the cats were a little bit older, they're still they're almost two years old, so they're still quite frisky. And I can't, you know, have the wheel out with them. I have to be hiding in my room. But I hope to have a lot of hand spun to show you guys next week and I think that will be fun, just getting to participate and have the camaraderie of other spinners chatting together and encouraging each other. And it's just what I love about Ravelry and the knitting and spinning community. And with that, on to prizes galore. We have so many prizes to do this week, so I'm just going to jump in really quick. Group news, we have our hat cow going on for the month of October. Knit any hat, any size, I don't care, baby, adult, whatever, I know I don't make any requirements. You can do whips, you can, it's whatever. And there's just a chatter thread for that. So just chat in there. There's already been a ton of chatter in there. I'm trying not to chat too much because I don't want to like be trying to find the prize winners and pick my name all the time. So I'm keeping my chat to a minimum, but I love how much you guys are chatting. People are in there and they're encouraging each other and saying, I like this hat and talking about different patterns and stuff that they're doing. And it's just great for me to see and read that whole thread. I've been really enjoying it. And then for November and December, we have our sparkle cow going along and I go coming up. And I made it start November so that people can have time if they don't have any sparkle yarn and they'd like to order some. I know sometimes if you're getting something from an indie dyer and you're special requesting sparkle yarn or something, it can take a couple weeks to dye. So I wanted to make sure that everybody had enough time to get it. And we have a hashtag on Instagram for this and it is sparkle cow. I'm looking it up right now on my phone. But if you want to take a picture of your yarn, if you have your yarn picked out for the sparkle cow and you know what you're going to knit, I would love for you to take a picture of it and share it with us all so we can all kind of see each other on Instagram and follow each other and get to see the yarns that everybody's doing. And I know um, B-D-L-A-S-G-I, hi, uh, who's a friend of mine. We've been chatting on Ravelry. Uh, she showed her sparkly yarn that she's going to be using for the Sparkle Cal, and it's really pretty. It's black with sparkles, and I have to show my, I'll take a picture of mine coming up soon. And so if you would like to do that, to post the yarn that you plan to use for the Sparkle Cal, if you're on Instagram, or if you're not on Instagram, there's a thread for the Sparkle Cal, a chatter along, so you can post in there, and I think some people have. So just show your yarn, and I know that it's hard with sparkle yarn because sometimes it doesn't come across on camera. Don't worry about that. If you say it has sparkle, I'm just going to trust you. I really am so laid back. You have no idea. You could lie to me and only you would know. I'm not, I'm not going to check. But 
that's the next upcoming cows. We had winners. We had our little ones knit along that was for August and September. And the prize for that is these Knitter's Pride BPNs, this bag that is still nicely packaged up for you. And it is a you so and so bag, and the inside is a coffee print. And then this self striping skein of Knitter's Nightmare. And it's all those, sorry, got some fuzz on it. There's all those pretty colors. And this will be coming to host number 54 from the thread. And she made a little bonnet and booties. And it's Ange in the East. So Ange in the East, you won the little ones, Cal. Just contact me when you see this. Give me your address where you would like me to send it to. And I will send it out to you. I have a lot of stuff coming up in the next future weekend, so I don't know how fast I will get stuff out. I don't want to make any promises and fail because it depends on the week and what's going on, whether I'm really good about getting prizes. Sometimes I get prizes out within a couple days. Sometimes it's several weeks. I just sent out one prize on Saturday to Norway because I was waiting for the weather to cool off because there was something in it that could melt and I didn't want it to arrive to her ruined. But the next thing that we had was the stitches prizes. And since there are two of these, I was trying to think of how I could fairly do it. So what I'm going to do is, in the episode thread for this episode, whoever sees it first can comment and say, I would like that one. And you don't message me because I want everybody to be able to see, you know, so you can see if somebody else posted. But if you see this, go and check in through the other posts to make sure nobody else has posted asking. But you can pick which one of these two you want. There's the mustache sock in the family reunion. It's a half skein, so it's enough for some rose city rollers. And then there's a heavenly fiber in the autumn leaves, which is gorgeous. They're both gorgeous. I, lo I love the color palette in this one, which is why I picked it. <laughs> but Okay, first one to see it, comment under the post thread for this and say which one you want. And then the other person hopefully will like the, the other prize. I don't know how else to do it, guys. I'm sorry. Okay, stitches. Post number seven was picked, and that was Tilly Trout. And she said that she would do one on science because she is a scientist. And then the next winner was post number 30, which is Christian Crafter. And she said that she would do a TED Talk on the importance of having friends as introverts. And I agree with that. I definitely am a very big introvert. I've gotten more, I used to not be at all when I was younger, but as I've gotten older, I've become more of an introvert, like extreme opposite end of where I was 10 years ago. And I really value my friends, and I especially value them in small doses, like small groups, like two or three friends hanging out at a coffee shop, as opposed to large parties at places. That, that's not a good social situation for me, but small groups, being very chill and relaxed, I love that. And then the next prize that we had was the Diana Couture bag. And Diana so kindly offered to this giveaway for us. So thank you again, Diana. And the winner for that was post number 83, Knit to Finish. And if you just contact me, Knit to Finish, and tell me, you know, if you still want the bag that you listed in your post, because everybody picked which bag they would like. I'll check and make sure that one's whatever is still available in her shop, and then she will send that off to you. And the last thing that we had for giveaway is this H Cats Crafts and she has so many options for her cross stitch Q snap covers in her shop so I'm glad that you guys went over and checked it out and her website's really well done so that was nice it was really pretty to look through but the winner for this is post number 21 sweet girl 222 so sweet girl let me know whenever you see this, and I will mail that off to you. That is all the prizes. I It was funny because then I was looking through the different things, like the Diana Couture bag, the post that you guys were saying, which one that you would like. It was very much enabling to me. I wanted to go and buy three more of her bags because 
she has amazing prints. She has ones that I haven't seen other places. A lot of you guys said the Sherlock, and I, I love Sherlock. I, w I would definitely have gotten that bag, and I might still go. I, ooh, that's a good Christmas present idea. I might ask my husband to get me one of those for Christmas. Okay, so that's all of the group stuff that we have, I think. Yes, I think that's it. So now on for the book this week. Since it is October, the entire month, I'm going to be doing spooky books. Now, don't let that scare you if you don't like horror books and stuff like that, because I'm going, I read a very wide variety of stuff, as you guys probably know. So I'm going to be doing a very wide variety. We'll have some books that I'll review from, I think, the 18th century and different things like that, gothic books that are, you know, very good, and some just different favorite ones I have. So some of them will be scary, some of them won't be, so you can pick and choose from which ones you like. The book for this week is The Vanishing by Wendy Webb. And this is a book that I got on sale on Audible, which is the site that I listen to all my books on. I have a subscription there where I get one audiobook a month. And the narrator for this, I looked it up so I could tell you guys, is Z or Z X E and then Sands. That was the narrator that narrated this book. And I I read it last year, last October. So I can't 100% remember, and I'm also not picky about my narrators. It has to be really bad for it to detract from the story for me. But I would recommend this book to anyone to get it from your library or if you find it on sale or at a used bookstore. I wouldn't say it's go out and buy full 100% new pay cover price, that kind of thing, because it's just a very fun mystery more than a horror story and I will give you guys the description of the book really fast and I, I gave it a three stars on Goodreads just because I wouldn't read it again but I enjoyed it for what it was it wasn't extremely well written it wasn't very thought-provoking the ending did make me almost give it a four star that's all I'll say but here's the description of the book Recently widowed and rendered penniless by her Ponzi scheming husband, Julia Bishop is eager to start anew. So when a stranger appears on her doorstep with a job offer, she finds herself accepting the mysterious yet unique position, caretaker to his mother, Amaris Sinclair, the famous and rather eccentric horror novelist whom Julia has always admired and who the whole world believes is dead. When she arrives at the Sinclair's enormous estate on Lake Superior, Julia begins to suspect that there may be sinister undercurrents to her too-good-to-be-true position. As Julia delves into the reasons of why Amaris chose to abandon her successful writing career and withdraw from the public eye, her search leads to unsettling connections to her own family tree, making her wonder why she was really invited to Havenwood in the first place and what monstrous secrets are still held prisoner within its walls. And it's a very sh it's short, it's 304 pages, but it's very good, fun read. You know, mindless fun. I think somebody said in their review, read it in your bathtub with a glass of wine, that kind of book. And it does have spooky parts when she encounters things in the house and kind of the things where you're like, is that real? Is she just imagining it? Very much kind of the psychological ghost story stuff. So that is the book for this week and I am excited to do next week's spooky book. It's much older spooky book and it's one of my favorites. <laughs> I, I love the older kind of books where it's not so blunt on the spookiness, it's more subtle. But that is everything I have, and I just wanted to tell you guys, if anybody's in the area of Wimberley, Texas, I will be at Ply Store, the Ply Yarn Store, next Saturday for a while, because uh, we are having our Hill Country, or San Antonio and the surrounding areas of Austin and stuff, Yarn Crawl, next weekend, and the one after that. The one after that will be in Rhinebeck, but this next one, I will be at Ply in Wimberley, so if you are in the area and you'd like to come 
hang out and spin, I might be spinning because it's Spinzilla, and knit with me a bit, I would love to hang out with you. That's all I have for this week. I hope you guys have a wonderful week and that you get to do all the things you love. Okay, bye.